Hi guys, quick intro. Um, I don't really have much anything else to say other than to say this is a video all about drop downs, um, the UI component that you find in Unity. Um, so uh, let's get started, and of course, uh, all of the excitement happens after the fade. So I'm going to go ahead and create a drop down list by clicking UI and then opening up and selecting drop down. And that goes as our list here. Now, uh, to bring it into full view, just click on the scene and then press F while it's selected. And then you'll see that it, it drags on there. Uh, it seems to default to the, the sort of middle bottom of the screen. So let's just drag it up here uh, so we can see what we're working with. So when we play this, uh, this is the sort of effect of, a, of the uh, drop down list is when you can populate this with items in here and when you click on the item then you can do something inside the the, um, the, the code to participate in some kind of thing so choose you know whether you're a warrior or a berserker or, or whatever kind of class so that's the sort of uh, idea for the, the drop down list, a very compact way of keeping uh, a list. And the, the more items that go in there, obviously it's going to add scroll bars, and all that kind of stuff automatically for you. So the first question is, how do you get values into there? Well, if you're a designer, uh, you are probably just going to go in here and then start typing in these values inside here, um, which is, you know, not uh, to onerous you just click on plus and you choose Sloan's option and you can also put a, a sprite in here and we're just going to deal with text in, in this example I'll do a follow on one so that we don't we keep these videos short so I've added an option in there and when I run this I now have Sloan's option down there but what if you are building this from a database? So you have a spreadsheet and you read that in at runtime. How do you populate these values here? So um, let's, uh, let's select these values and just remove them so that there is nothing in there. So there's nothing inside that list. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a script that's going to take those, we're going to insert values into here um, at runtime. So right now there is nothing inside that list. Uh, and the other thing is I should mention here that we have an on value changed here which is our event. So our event handler uh, we're going to have to take in, it, it takes in one parameter. You can see that it says int32. int32 is just the, the, the system name uh, of integer. So it's, it's an int that it takes. So we are going to have to create our own event handler for here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a C sharp script and this is going to be called drop down example. Uh, I don't need to give it a fancy name, but I'm going to double click this just now and we're going to start some coding. So our script is going to, um, we're going to use some kind of, I, I guess it's a kind of form of, of a test driven development. Um, I'm going to create a, a method that is going to get um, data from from some resource. So whether it's it's a resource that's on the disk or whether it's you know across the, the internet or wherever it is, we're going to get that back and we're going to place that inside a, a list item. So that's what we're going to do just now. Um, and then we're going to consume that. And by consume, I mean we're going to take that data and then we're going to do something with it. That's what consume means. Um, and then that's going to fill up the the, uh, the drop down list. So the first thing we need to do is we need to have a reference to our object here. So you see that we have a drop down script. So this is the this is the um, the mono behavior that we need to to reference. Drop down, and then we're going to call it drop down. And you'll see that we now get the red squiggly there, and we can do control dot and then choose unity using unity U, unity engine ui um, nope and we want start i want to start method here and the start method is going to say populate list okay so this is our test driven development part of it because our populate list here is just literally going to make up words okay so uh, 
um, to do, and then we're going to say uh, read these values from the website in future. But for now, we're not going to do that. So let's, oops. So we're going to create a list of strings. And again, we need to add some uh, using declarations here. So we're going to add our using system collection generic. And that's going to add up to the top there. We can go to the system collections. We're not going to use that. Uh, we're going to call them names equals new list string. And then we're going to pass in those values here. So we're going to specify Fred, Barney, uh, Wilma, and Betty, which of course is the name of the Flintstones. So there's our names of our list. And then all we do here is we then do drop down dot and then uh, options, um, we do our add option, sorry. And then we have a number of, op <laughs> we have a number of uh, uh, versions of this method. We can specify the, the, the option data or we can specify sprites or we can specify strings. Uh, all of these are lists. So we're gonna specify our names Tidy this up a bit. So we have a reference to our dropdown, which we're going to have to add in just a second. Uh, and so when this method, when this mono behavior first starts up, it's going to populate the list, and the list is going to add these names to our dropdown. Okay. So when we go to here, uh, I'm going to create an empty game object, which I'm going to put in the main level here, and I'm going to call this scene, scene controller, and then I'm going to add my drop down example script here. And you see that it's looking for a drop down object. So I'm going to drag this drop down object onto this slot. And now uh, if I save this scene, so I'm going to call this uh, Scene. And then when I run this, I should get the names of the Flintstones inside our list. And so we get Fred, Barney, Wilma, Betty, and so on. Okay. So that's great, but um, we also need to know what happens when you click on the particular object. So um, let's say we have a situation where we need to know um, what type of, uh, what name has been selected. So we need to know whether it's Fred, Barney, Wilma, or Betty. So we're gonna have to change the way that we've, we've done this. So uh, the first thing is we're gonna move this declaration from populate list up to here. So what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, we're going to make this names list global for this class only. So this names is available everywhere, and I'm also going to add a public method which is our event handler. Now remember that the event handler for this object here. Click on this object. The event handler has to take in an integer. Now the integer is the zero based index of the items in this list. So in our example, the zero based index, that means that Fred is zero, Barney is one, Wilma is two, Betty is three. So public void, and I'm going to call it drop down um, index changed. And we'll call that index. And we need to do something inside here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another UI element and I'm going to write I'm going to right click on canvas once I've selected it and I'm going to choose text. Uh, and you see the text is that neat dark color. So I'm going to change that to something um, obvious. And I'm going to change this to please name. Okay. So just to, to give us some sort of visual feedback when we, we do this. Uh, and then obviously I need to do public text 
um, selected me. So now, uh, when we get the index in, I'm going to read in. Uh, I'm going to examine the the contents of this array or this list at index index, uh, and because these match up, and the reason why I know they match up is because I've added them as options here. Um, then I'm going to be able to get read back those values from the the, the uh, database. Now, this, from the the list, this is the only way you can do this. You you must basically maintain your list inside your code. Don't rely on the UI at all. The UI is there just to show the user. You need to keep this list internally. So this is why you have to do it this way, um, rather than reading the rather than trying to read the values back from the list. It's it's much more difficult. In fact, I'm, and and I'm not entirely sure, but I'm pretty 100% sure that, that that as far as Unity is concerned, you can't read those values back readily anyway. Um, and then in other um, forms, I think Win Forms as well, you, you can't get it that way, or you can, it's difficult to get it that way anyway. So um, this is the, the the best sort of method to to get these values back. So what I want to do is I want to do selected name dot text equals and then it's just going to be names and then index and that's it so we have our selected name dot index and we set that to there so we need to do a couple of things uh, our scene controller needs to know about that text box so we drag that over there so now when we select this item here this should change to b our object. So initially it's not selected, we can fix that in, in just a second. Um, but we can choose Wilma, Barney, and Betty, and nothing happens because what did we forget to do? It seems to be a theme for this. <laughs> it seems to be a theme for this uh, series uh, is we didn't select the event handler. So we're going to go and find the event handle, which is on our scene controller, uh, which is the object. And then we need to specify the class that's on there. So our class is drop down example. And you notice that we have two options here. We have drop down index changed int, which is a static parameter. And we have a dynamic integer. Remember that uh, if we choose the static one, so if I choose this one down here, so you have static parameters, if I choose this one down here, I have to specify the number. We don't want that because if we do that, that means that we specify this number. It's always going to be, no matter which one is chosen, you're always going to have this value here, which is three. So we don't want that. We want the dynamic one. So we choose this top one up here. And you see that that box now disappears. So now we run it, we get Fred, Barney, Wilma, and then we click back on Fred, we get that number there. So really, um, we should have a, an option that's uh, please select name. So it kind of cheats. So now Fred is, has been demoted uh, to option one, Barney's two, th um, Wilma's three, and then Betty's four, obviously. So now, we basically get a prompt here, so please select, and we get to choose Wilma, and if we choose the, the first option again, uh, then we get that. So you've probably seen this in quite a few uh, situations where you get a, you know, please select your birth date, and then if you don't select it, then it says, you know, that it draws an error to it, and says, oh, you, you didn't select anything. Um, and that's because you need to know the, the, the selected item which comes through which is going to be your index value. So um, if you're, let's say you say if um, index equals zero, selected name dot text uh, dot color equals colors dot red, else selected name dot color equals color dot white. So, um, again, let's choose this one here, and let's choose the red color for uh, this name here. 
So now we have our please select name. We choose Wilma and Wilma is now in white, but if we choose our please select name again, you can see that it goes to red, indicating that that is bad. So yeah, so that's, uh, I guess that's pretty much it for the, the basics of um, the, the drop down list. And so that's drop downs. Uh, thanks very much for watching and I will catch you next time. Thanks. Bye.